Shemai and welcome to Bitcoin Coffee Break, the show in which we have a quick look at the Bitcoin price and some of the other markets may be affecting it. The price of Bitcoin is at $7,926. It's had a high of $8,099 and a low of $7,770. I did plan on doing a Bitcoin Coffee Break yesterday um, and I also plan on getting a whole bunch of interviews at the Lightning Hack Day on, on Sunday. Um, I wish I didn't either of. I was so busy on the... Uh, on the hack desk at the Lightning Hack Days, I didn't get, I managed to grab any interviews with anybody, and then I was utterly exhausted yesterday. So I just sort of chilled out and did nothing. Um, I had a little, had a little uh, trip round Munich with the family and, and saw some sights. It was nice, nice city. Um, so, so yeah. So I hope to catch up with some of, some of the presenters at the Lightning Hack Day. There was one or two which were really interesting, and I want to catch up with them and do an interview. So hopefully I'll do that over Google Hangouts or something uh, in the near future. Um, and today we're back off to uh, sunny Wales, and then I'll be preparing for the San Francisco Bitcoin Conference 2019, uh, where I'll be running a Blitz tutorial and a tutorial um, making little modules uh, in sync with my, uh, you know, my BTC IoT tutorials. So yeah, it should be good. Got a lot of work to do when I get home, so I, I really uh, appreciated the the chill out yesterday. But yeah, back to work today. So, uh, what's going on with the price? Um, we, contrary to my my prediction uh, a couple of days ago, I kind of saw this this resistance, um, uh, which I, other 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 people speculating on 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 the or doing technical analysis uh, thought that it would continue to to rise or, or bounce off this sort of 8700 uh, price range they look like there's some resistance there but i mean bitcoin's just smashed through that so very much the whales are at play it's a hard market to predict at the moment there's a obviously a general movement to the upside um but there are these huge shifts up and down uh, and I know, I mean, I think the claim that the price is being manipulated, quote unquote, is fair. Uh, there was a, 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 I know there was some reporting of a whale, I think, going into Coinbase, moved like 25,000 coins into Coinbase um, just before the dump and then pulled the, pulled out like 10,000. So it, it, it's very likely as Bitcoin is slowly moving upward because it's easy if you've got big bags and you're a whale and you're, you're, you're a group of whales to try and try to shift the price around as, as the bitcoin price is going up um, and then fill your bag so I, I imagine that the whales are, are, are causing these these crashes to scare the market so they can buy up some cheap bitcoins and, and increase their stash so um, some pretty technical whale buying going on at the moment and selling so yeah it's probably just a good idea to, to wait on the sidelines and kind of watch the action as it happens uh, obviously you should always you know not be impatient when it comes to trading, buy and hold Bitcoin, wait five years. Uh, if you do that, you're likely to be rich. If you if you trade regularly, you're likely to lose all your Bitcoins. So yeah, I can stay away from that. But yeah, so so interesting markets at the moment. I imagine well, we've hit this 7,900 resistance zone, which is clearly very strong resistance. So I, I can't imagine it's gonna break through that. And I don't think it would be in the interest of the whales who are manipulating the market at the moment to, to, to let it break through that. So they would, they would keep it above that, at that range. Uh, but it gives us a nice base to, to, to continue going up from. So maybe going, we'll, we'll go flat for a little while um, and then we'll have a, a, another large shift up and then probably start attacking the, the 9,000 resistance uh, zone again. Let's have a look at the news feed, shall we? Uh, open positions on Chicago Mercantile Exchange, Bitcoin futures hit record high. Nice. Because uh, obviously that's our R and ramp for Wall Street at the moment, so that means uh, a lot of big investment firms are, are getting interested in uh, Bitcoin. Monero XMR, oh, Monero XMR recent hard fork introduces anti-ASIC mining algorithm. So I, I imagine that's about the uh, Random X uh, developments, which is a it. Uh, it's called random X because it, it ra randomly generates proof of uh, different types of proof of work, which means you can't develop an ASIC mining chip to um, uh, to cater for that proof of work. It makes it a lot harder, um, which which encourages CPU mining and, and, and decentralized mining. So this is why we need Monero to stick around so they can experiment with stuff like this, which Bitcoin couldn't possibly experiment with. And there may be some good work which comes out of that, you know, uh, comes out of that world, which which then benefits Bitcoin. Litecoin, mining difficulty hits all-time highs. Prices continue to fluctuate. Bitcoin price, Wales manufactured dumped uh, to accumulate more BTC. Yep, I agree. Analytical firm calls Bitcoin the king of assets, Class Hill. Nice. 
uh, blah 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 bitcoin turns bearish so then you get obviously you've got also got the, the bearish news coming out of the, the the news feed there as well but give it a few days it will all turn bullish again i'm sure right so ethereum let's have a look at ethereum so ethereum's looking um uh obviously bitcoin there's still like clear upside is still moving up whereas ethereum looks more like a kind of uh a, a, i don't know a sideways flag which is formed i guess or something like but uh, again it, it's just entirely dependent upon bitcoin and bitcoin's price um if we compare the two there's there's not really that much difference um there was a little when uh bitcoin stopped its parabolic run and and and, and stabled out for a little while everyone got excited and, and imagined the next ethereum pub was coming so they bought ethereum and then realized it wasn't really and then we, we went stable again so so yeah not a lot going on there xmr monero is looking a little bit more stable um let's compare this against bitcoin here yeah or well, maybe actually a bit more unstable in fact so it's just, just like a kind of echo of the bitcoin price um uh so i didn't do the prices so ethereum is at 245 dollars it's dropped 1.4 percent and it's at a high of 249 dollars and a low of 235 dollars monero is at 86.7 dollars it's had a high of 88.8 dollars .8 and a low of 84.2 dollars and it's had a, a 2.6 percent so a, a drop so a bit a bit more of a steeper drop than than bitcoin Let's have a look at Plucky Litecoin. Plucky Litecoin's at 102.9 dollars. Um, it's down 2.7 percent. It's had a high of 206.2 dollars and a low of 98.3 dollars. Um, uh, Litecoin still looks like it's very much in its in its channel, which is formed, uh, which is interesting. It's interesting when you compare it against Bitcoin and, and Monero and Ethereum. Um, so Litecoin still still seems you know safely within its channel. It's formed. Its, its upward channel is formed. So. Um, and it would look like it's going to now kind of bounce bounce up from 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 that base of 102 dollars let's have a look at gold shall we so gold's um uh, mooning um quite impressive we, we can see that uh the last time we we, we had a upside like this and i don't think it was even as steep as what we've had um was in uh, at the end of 2018 and then uh the price uh, consolidated sideways for a little while bouncing up and down before then you know returning back to the downside so um so yeah so i so i imagine you know a bit gold gold isn't going down below 1300 dollars anytime soon it's gonna stay above that price and then probably um maybe get stack on another sort of 20 30 40 percent on top of the, the on top of uh uh the, um, the, the the move up so maybe maybe to the sort of uh 1400 dollars 1500 dollar price range let's have a little zoom in and see what's going on yeah look at this wow I mean, gold was just so incredibly bearish, but um, maybe the manipulators could could no longer manipulate gold, uh, and then all the 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 scary uh, 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 market news, which is coming out of Trump's behaviour, um, has finally managed to um, uh, push that liquidity into gold as a, as a safe haven, as somewhere as somewhere safe to put your money when the markets are looking bad. Let's have a little look at the uh, news feed. Gold price has little changed despite escalating trade tensions. That's a very, on a very short time frame, by the way. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I think they're just talking about this, this, you know, these, what we've got, like this day here. Um, so, yeah, obviously the price has changed um, uh, on the on the trade tension talks. Uh, gold rally continues, bull set sights on 13.50. Yep, that's fair. Gold price futures, technical analysis, blah, blah, blah. Um, gold prices rise on safe haven demand as trade tensions escalate further. So people have been waiting for gold's price to go up significantly. Um, as a safe haven asset and it hasn't happened so they've been reluctant to put them but they don't want to be the first ones to put their money in gold but now other people have put their money in gold they're now going to start putting their money in gold as well so um, uh, stocks wall street mixed as trade wars linger blah 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 gold technical analysis hits highest since april after friday's bullish close so yeah so uh, gold prices rise on mexico tariffs escalating sino us tensions um so yeah it's continuing continuing to go up um so i imagine gold will continue its bowl run for you know and put a put put, put an extra maybe 100 200 dollars on the price on, on where it is from now let's have a look at the stock market so the stock market is still pretty bearish it's had a little uptick um just over the past um which would 
you know coincide with golds uh, flattening out and small drop from its from its pump. Uh, gold, uh, the stocks have had a little uptick. So let's have a little look at the news feed and see why that might be. St uh, stock bulls are telling themselves a lot of lies about this market. Uh, world shares skid after technology sell-off hits Nasdaq. Um, so there's been a, a technology sell-off uh, in the stock markets because of the US uh, Trump's um, now going after the tech companies uh, for infringing antitrust laws. So antitrust laws in the US, as, as near as I can figure, uh, um, um, anti-monopoly sort of laws to keep markets fair um, when you have like people, you know, or big companies uh, taking too much of the market share and, and, um, and monopolizing the market, then these antitrust laws are supposed to kind of regulate that. And this, this is the problem when you have bad monopolies of power. So when you have your, your, your big, you know, centralized systems which have monopolies within a free market, you know, that sucks. Um, I think when you have like a free and open source system, uh, which has a monopoly in the market like Linux or Wikipedia or Bitcoin or whatever, um, then that's that's generally okay. So this is why we need free and open source to to to, to monopolize these markets. But there we are. Um, uh, so yeah, so Trump continues to try and pump gold. I start. I suppose he must be a gold bug. That's all. That's all I get from this. Uh, so the the Bitcoin Reddit. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin Reddit. So at the top there, we've got the feed from Voltoro for day two of the Lightning Hack Day. I'm going to be watching that because. Um, Although I was able to sort of like poke my head through the door on a few talks, I wasn't able to actually sit down and watch one full talk because uh, I was so busy on the hack desk, which is an absolute privilege to be on. Um, and it gives me a renewed respect for Christian Rutzel and the work he does on the on these hack days. Um, in incredibly, incredible amount of hard work keeping it all together. So what else have we got here? Someone's done some Bitcoin street art and people have paid them 0 0.01 BTC, which, which is very kind. Um, a bunch of obviously news about the price. Uh, people saying they're not going to sell. Someone recommended his friend to buy Bitcoin at three thousand five hundred dollars. Um, um, and then told, uh, sorry, when when Bitcoin was three thousand five hundred, I called a friend and told him he should think about buying Bitcoin again. I, I would even if you th if you if you're feeling incredibly bullish over Bitcoin, I would recommend not going out of your way to tell people to buy Bitcoin. If they come to you and if they ask you whether you think it's going to go up or down and you think it's going to go up, then yeah, you can tell them it's going to go up and you can help them secure and buy their own Bitcoin safely. But I would continually remind them that it can also drop to nothing because uh, you, you've got to go into with Bitcoin with your eyes wide open or else, yeah, you just be careful advising friends and family to, to buy Bitcoin. It's, it's, it's a dangerous game. Um, I've seen a few people burning out from, from that kind of behavior. Um, so blah, 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 yeah, just sort of bullish and bearish news. There's a thing here on RSK from, uh, consensus or, uh, con consensus, sorry. I almost forgot about consensus, uh, which this is really cool. Um, you know, for me being a bit of a lefty here, but seeing, seeing, a, a Chomsky video getting onto the, our Bitcoin, um, thread, obviously he's a lefty anarchist. Um, and he's talking about sort of the tyrannies within corporations and, um, uh, money's role and how money works with that. So it's a nice, nice little video to watch. Chomsky is obviously brilliant, fantastic, amazing. He's done some incredible work in this world and some great study. And his his thought process is, is always evidence based, which is which is good. It's refreshing to see. Um, so yeah, so so go out and watch some Chomsky videos if you can. He's the he's the Andreas of the anarchist world. Um, uh, I would say as well, like so, being at the, the Lightning Hack Day, there was you know, oh, there's plenty of nice, healthy debates on um, how uh, the lefties can see value in Bitcoin. And I was talking to one dude, and I can't remember his name. I'm going to have to try and hunt him down, but he's doing a project specifically on the obviously decentralized decision making on how that could be used um, um, to benefit uh, cooperatives and cooperative move cooperative movements. And we both agreed that. Um, uh, Bitcoin's potential uh, and utility in that area is just not being explored. So if you want to get into a project which is going to, uh, could have like, you know, profound impact on this world um, and is also really not being explored because obviously Bitcoin is predominantly, um, well, it's focused on making a good money, which is important. Um, then, then yeah, please do you know, check out Bitcoin's ability to uh, have help decision making through consensus in a, in a cooperative. Um, and I look forward to seeing more work in that. 
Um, and I'm sure work being explored in that kind of area, just like work being explored in um, encouraging uh, uh, renewable energy sources for mining and how that could benefit, you know, green energy, how that, that could pull lefties into, into Bitcoin and could give us a much uh, more diverse community of, 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 of thought, which is which is what we want, I think. Um, so, so, yeah, so pretty cool. Pretty cool to see that there. Um, so, yeah. But I must admit that the, the, the R Reddit isn't looking particularly bearish. So I think people have come to terms with these 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 price movements. Um, I've also got up here, I've got uh, uh, for the little bit where we look at the, the news and the different news articles, because uh, I spoke about this in one of my other videos, but I, I couldn't cite it properly. But I managed to find the, the PDF on, from Microsoft, which is decentralized identity, which I, I think is really interesting. It's well worth Googling the the PDF and having the, the a look at the, the, the PDF and... Um, having a look at their proposal. So this is the idea of people taking ownership over their own identity rather than, you know, giving it to the hands of corporations and, and you know, um, uh, business institutes or whatever, over, uh, sorry, uh, government institutes or whatever over over the internet that you control your, your identity. Um, and then they, they you know, what, what they talk about, why you need a decentralized identity and why it's important for a free society. It's very cypherpunk, um, which is incredible to see it coming out of Microsoft. It's hilarious. Um, and then uh, they then go on to talk about how, you know, uh, open ledgers um, and blockchains and Bitcoin, uh, specifically Bitcoin, is um, is going to allow this to happen uh, to, for people to have a decentralized identity. So that's big. So that's uh, Microsoft um, using the huge amount of energy which is consumed to secure Bitcoin um, and to secure the ledger. Uh, they're leveraging that so people can have decentralized identity, which is dead cool so yeah well worth the read of that i haven't read through it properly myself but i will on the i'm planning to read it on the on the on the flight home let's have a look at the next news article i've got here oh that's the um uh, king of the assets class here we spoke about that so i'll get rid of that uh oh yeah the other thing I, i've been reading a lot more of the financial times because i've been staying in hotels and uh, i've been buying more and more back home because it's, it's a cool um uh, uh publication um but obviously it's really frustrating because they have a paywall on their website and I refuse to pay for paywalls. So um, I can't wait for the day that the Financial Times accepts uh, lightning payments like yours to access their content. I think that'd be really great. And I actually think that they're probably um, their game for that kind of, uh, uh, for, for, for trialing that kind of technology. So, um, uh, but I noticed more and more, there's, there's plenty of articles. There's a, a, an article, you know, being featured on the front page or in the first few pages of the Financial Times on cryptocurrency or Bitcoin uh, in pretty much every publication, which is really, really interesting. Um, so yeah, so here's one here about uh, uh, Tron and BitTorrent chief uh, Justin Sun pays $4.6 million at auction to, uh, to have uh, dinner with uh, Warren Buffett. So let's, let's hope that he shills um, well, cryptocurrency and the value of, of, of cryptocurrency and uh, to Warren Buffett. And uh, I know um, uh, Justin has had his issues with Bitcoin in the recent future, but, but you know, long term, he's always been a, 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 um, a Bitcoin, Bitcoin bull. So hopefully he'll shield Bitcoin to him as well. So that's cool that he's going out of his way to go and have dinner with, with Warren Buffett and then try and convert that future coiner into a coiner. Um, the yeah another article which i read in a physical um uh, financial times maybe i should just i should just fork up and, and pay for um uh to, so i can actually access these articles just for this show because there's some there's some good articles in there um uh, and then you know spam them with emails and and uh, however else i can to try and encourage them to have a yule system set up um uh, so another article was uh, top banks push ahead with digital coins for 2020 so um, UBS led research uh, on uh, ut utility settlement coins. So the idea is that they'll have stable coins for, uh, I think, like 10 of the top world currencies. And then people will be able to trade between those um, uh, or the, the, the stable coin, which is the utility settlement coin, um, which will be pegged to the fiat coin, will then be able to um, make trading big trades less friction, you know, take the friction away from, from trading between countries. Uh, so it's really cool, interesting work. Um, I like the stable coin stuff, which is going on, but I mean, we call them stable coins now, but when, when fiat reacts poorly and, and has some 
big crashes or uh, loses a lot of value or has inflation problems, then then is the stable coin going to continue to be pegged to the stable coin or will the stable coin then become the the, the, the sort of store of value? And then, you know, obviously that's impossible without having something to peg it to. And this is where Bitcoin's um, uh, value proposition comes in. Uh, so, yeah, so interesting articles on the Financial Times. I wish I could show you the articles on here, but uh, I'm, I, I, I'm struggling to, yeah, I don't want to pay the um, the the subscription. Um, so hopefully they'll implement some sort of lightning payment uh, thing, pay-as-you-go thing soon. So there we are. So that's pretty much it for today. I hope you have a great day and um, I shall speak to you tomorrow.